Have you had a chance to visit your local fire department lately? Having a fire department is something we take for granted in Ontario. It may surprise you to know that not all municipalities can afford to have a fire department. Do you know how much your house insurance premium would be if you didn't have a fire department? Did you know that many fire departments are struggling to survive and desperately need your help? Every municipality must provide public education with respect to fire safety and prevention, as well as fire protection service deemed necessary in accordance with needs and circumstances. The members of your fire department take great pride in their role of providing fire and rescue services and very much want to continue to do so. But not every fire department has the trained firefighters or the ability to invest in equipment required to safely go inside a burning building to rescue you. Many do not have the proper equipment needed to cut you out of your car in an accident. Perhaps in your municipality there's no requirement for water rescue. Some are not trained or equipped to respond to medical calls when the ambulance is delayed. Fire departments are 100% funded by the local municipality through property taxes and fundraising efforts. For small municipalities, the type of service we are able to provide is completely dependent on the number of volunteer firefighters and money available. Each year, your council members and the fire chief conduct a review of services provided versus the potential for tragic events to occur. The challenge is to balance delivery of the services we can afford against additional services everyone would like to have. Most small fire departments have no full-time firefighters. When a 911 call is made, volunteers drop everything and drive to the fire hall, get in the trucks and go to the fire. These people have full-time jobs and family obligations and are volunteer firefighters in their spare time. They commit to mandatory training sessions and many use holidays from work to go on required training courses. Most fire halls are closed unless it's a training night or they are out on a 911 call. today burn much faster and hotter. They are loaded with toxic, cancer-causing chemicals. Firefighters must have extensive training and protective equipment to do their job safely and effectively. The bucket brigades of the past are no longer a safe option. All fire departments must adhere to the same regulations regarding health and safety, training and equipment, whether they're in a big city, a small village or a remote cottage community. These changes are all very good and are saving lives and homes by enabling us to respond more effectively. However, property owner expectations of what a small volunteer fire department can do are much higher than in previous generations. These factors, combined with a declining volunteer workforce, an aging population, and the global financial crisis, have created a situation where many communities are questioning their ability to continue to safely and effectively operate a fire department. If we are to survive, we must find a way to address the financial challenges of our existence. Perhaps fire prevention and public education are all we can afford to do. Putting out fires may be all we can afford to do. Many fire departments have already stopped doing water and other types of rescue. Many buy services from a neighboring fire department for car accidents. Some are operating fire trucks that are over 30 years old that may or may not be reliable. All too often, public pressure requires us to continue providing services for which our equipment is outdated. Sometimes, instead of reducing services, funding for firefighter training and protective equipment are cut in order to balance the budget. Many small municipalities are facing the very real potential of having to significantly scale back service or close the local fire hall and consider amalgamation with another municipality. Quite simply, we need your help to survive. We must create a long-term financial strategy that will properly sustain us. 
We need to ensure that we are never placing the lives or safety of our firefighters at risk due to poor equipment or lack of training. We need to do our best to provide the right services at the most reasonable cost for our municipality. A quality service that will ensure we're not open to expensive lawsuits or public perception of poor performance due to failing equipment or inadequately trained firefighters. These are not easy choices, but they are the ones we must make. If everyone helps in some small way and we make the tough choices now, plan effectively and spend wisely, we can ensure the continued existence of our fire department well into the future. The cost of running a fire department is readily available from your municipality. However, very few people know how much higher their house insurance premium would be if they didn't have a fire department. Perhaps in your area, residents actually save more money on insurance premiums each year than the fire department costs to run. Yes, we need more volunteers to help put out the fires. But we need other help as well. There is an enormous workload of non-firefighting, administrative, maintenance and public education jobs that have to be done. None of these involve putting out fires or being on call. Safe and effective fire services need everyone's help. Whether you're a stay-at-home parent who knows their way around a computer, a retiree who has always wanted to drive a big red fire truck, or a youth looking for volunteer hours for school, we need you now. Please, become a fire department volunteer. Your community needs you.